Hello and welcome. My name is Rory, co-founder and Webflow developer at Propeller Digital. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to improve your forms in Webflow using a external service called FormSpark to handle all of your form submissions. So why might we want to do this? Well, the bottom line is there's a lot of issues with forms in Webflow. A couple of them that you're likely familiar with First of all, it only works with reCAPTCHA v2, which frankly sucks. That's the one where you have to tick the box, you have to pick out the traffic lights or the crossings or the motorbikes in the photo, which isn't ideal for conversions. It slows down the user, it forces them to have to go through this thing that they've seen so many times on the internet. And the issue is there are much better alternatives. vCAPTCHA v3, runs in the background, it's invisible, but Webflow just doesn't support it. And they also don't give you any fine-grained control. You either turn on reCAPTCHA for all of your Webflow forms or none of them. And maybe you have a particular form you want to use reCAPTCHA on, but now you also have to have reCAPTCHA on your newsletter signups if you're using the Webflow forms for those. Not ideal. We can send different forms to different email addresses. Let's say you're working on a fairly big site for a client that has six forms, for example. One form needs to go to the accounts department, one form needs to go to the sales department, so on and so forth. You cannot do that in Webflow. All of the forms have to go to the same list of email addresses. Not ideal. We can't change the format of the notification email. It's gonna put in all your fields, and some other information, that's it, no control there. And the submission limits, quite frankly, also suck. It's a couple of thousand, but again, if you're on a, a bigger site, if you're doing a big site for a client and you go past what the limits are in the business plan, your only option is to move to the enterprise plan, which is not ideal. So this is part of a general way that I like to use Webflow, which is to only use it for what it's really good at, which is the designer, the CMS, the editor. It's top class in those fields, but once you start getting into logic and memberships and forms, the limitations of Webflow start to show. So the solution here that I'm now going to take you through is a service called FormSpark. So FormSpark, FormSpark is a form to email service removes all of those issues that Webflow forms have, which we're going to see. It's simple to use, gives us a lot of control, and also has a very generous pricing plan. So it's on sale at the minute. I don't know how long for, but for $25, you get 50,000 form submissions on unlimited forms. So let's do the math on that. Let's say you're getting 500 form submissions on your website a month then this is going to last you for 100 months. Quite a lot of time. So I've been using it recently. I really like it. The free plan gives you 250 submissions to test it out. So let's go ahead and set this up. So we have three things open here. We have Webflow, where I just have a simple form set up. We have FormSpark, where I have logged in and created an account. And we also have Cloudflare because in this instance, we are going to stop bots with Turnstile, which is Cloudflare's smart reCAPTCHA alternative, works great, runs in the background, no cost. So I have literally just dragged in a form element here and popped it onto the page. And if we don't do anything, that's going to go through Webflow's form submission handler. And what we want to do is replace it with FormSpark. So over in FormSpark, I'm going to click Create New Form and call it Webflow Tutorial Form. You'll see here there are a range of different technologies or platforms we can integrate it with. Everything from HTML and WordPress over to a whole bunch of JavaScript frameworks, static site generators like Eleventy and Gatsby. What we want is Webflow. So we'll click Create. And this is going to show us the range of options that we have. So first of all, you're going to see all your submissions in here. You're going to get analytics on total number of form submissions by day, by week, by month, the countries that they come from. You're going to be able to export out all of your submissions as CSV or JSON and do that within a date range. 
the settings, we have the name of the form, the description. Email notifications is where we can select who this form will send submissions to. So this is the first really powerful feature that Webflow does not have. You can set this on a per form basis. And again, if you pay for this, you can make as many forms as you like. Email threading groups notifications from the same form into one email thread. So you may or may not want that. We're not going to be using webhooks or Zapier here, but you can integrate those if you so desire. You can collect a Slack channel. You can set up a custom honeypot to stop bots. You can set up custom spam words that you don't want people to be able to enter in. And we have spam protection, which we will get to in a moment. So if we go to how to, this is going to show us how to integrate this with Webflow. And it is very simple. We're going to copy this value and set our forms action attribute to the following value. What that means is we go into the form and we click on our form block over here. We go to element settings in the top right and we have a action field here. Now you might not have used this before. If you leave this blank, it defaults to Webflow and they handle the form submissions. And we're going to paste that in there like so. Next up, all of our form elements have to have a name attribute. So that simply means when we click our field and we're in element settings under field settings, that's just this option here. And that's what that value or that field is going to show up as in your email submissions. And we have email set here as well. Lastly, we need a form button with the type attribute set to submit that is already set up as part of Webflow's forms that has the submit action on it already. We can't change that, um, just has it already, which is fine. That will work fine for us. And down here, they give you some templates. These are for if you want to use HTML, if you were to, for example, copy that in, drop it into a HTML embed, but we don't want to do that. The designer for the forms in Webflow is really good. We can make some very nice forms. The issue is just the submissions. So let's go ahead and publish this and we'll just fill it out on the front end. We'll see what happens. We'll see the submission come through to FormSpark. Okay. Over we go and we fill out our form and it's going to take us to FormSpark's thank you page, which we will deal with afterwards. There we go. Your form has been submitted. Now, obviously we almost never are going to want to show a screen like this to people. So we're going to fix that next. But if we go over to submissions, we can see that our submission has come in. We can delete it, mark it as spam. We can reply to them from here. So that's the basics set up. So next we want to have a thank you page. So we are going to go over here and just duplicate this and call it. Thank you. Oops. And we will just say that'll do for now. And a button to go back to the home page. Back to home and set that to go to my home page like so. So we're going to publish this. And while that's publishing, we're going to go over to FormSpark and go to their guide. They have excellent, easy to use documentation. And we're going to search redirect, redirection. And we can specify a custom redirect URL to go to. So this can be handy if you are tracking conversions, you can set up your conversion tracker to count as a conversion in something like Google Analytics when they hit this page. So that's a potential use case for this. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy this input, this code here, and we're going to go back over to the form. And a handy thing about forms in Webflow is you're not just limited to the fields that they give you, such as checkboxes, such as select dropdowns. You can also make your own fields, in this case, an invisible one, by dragging it in like so and pasting in that code. And all we need to do here is replace this with the value of the thank you page, the URL rather, of the thank you page that we want to go to. 
So we'll go over to this. We will get the link to this page like so. Just go back and click in here. And we want to get that HTML embed and we want to put in our link there. We want to save and close and we want to publish that. So there's a variety of other options that we have in here that we can set up on FormSpark. Documentation is great. Everything is in there for now. Let's just check that our redirect is working successfully. Okay, so over we go to the page, fill it out again and submit. And now we get redirected to our thank you page and we can go back home. So far, so good. The last thing we need to handle here is those pesky bots that are gonna be flooding your inbox with absolute rubbish unless we turn this on. So we'll go back over to our form and into settings and they have a number of integrations. Strangely, they also don't support reCAPTCHA v3, but no worries. I prefer turnstile and turnstile is entirely invisible. So we'll select it here and you will go over to Cloudflare. If you haven't heard of Cloudflare, it lets you manage the DNS for your websites. Also speeds up, secures, protects your websites, does a whole bunch of stuff, highly recommend it. And when you make a new account, there's an option over here called Turnstile, which is their recapture alternative, entirely free. So we're going to click add site and we're gonna call this my tutorial site. And we're gonna put in the domain without the HTTP stuff at the start. Oh, and actually you need to put it in. You need to wait for it to pop up down here and just click add custom domain. There are a number of different ways that you can put this on your website. You can give the option of making it interactive if Cloudflare wants to challenge the user. I like going for invisible. This seems to work for me and click create and bingo here is our code so what we're going to do is we're going to copy this secret key and we are going to enter that into formspark in the back end and click save now again there is a little bit of coding here so i'm just going to put this also inside this html embed we want to copy the script that loads in turnstile onto our page and we also want to go to client side integration. And basically all we have to do after that is copy this and put it in below that, like so. And we need to replace our this text here with our site key. So the secret key is what goes into the back end down here, which you don't want to let anyone uh, find out. So I'm gonna be deleting that after this video and we will go into here into turnstile click our site and we will view turnstile keys and copy the site key and we are going to put that in here like so okay so far so good we'll save and close that and we will publish this now the beauty of the invisible recapture is the user probably isn't going to know that it's even on the website. They're not going to have to uh, help Google train their AI systems to pick out traffic lights and mountains out of photos. And you're going to get the benefits of bot protection without annoying your users. So it's a win-win and almost free of charge, turnstile free of charge, FormSpark, 50,000 submissions for $25 is pretty good. So we'll go over to this again. And if we've set that up correctly, we won't even notice. If there's an issue with the way we've set it up, it's going to give an error. But let's go ahead and see. And it is working perfectly. We will just check that that registered over here. Um, actually, it doesn't have enough data to tell us if it's working, but if it goes through to the thank you page without giving you any sort of errors on the page or in the console, then it is good to go. So that's it. We have set up a way to use forms in Webflow without having to use recapture v2, but still getting protection from bots. We're able to send different forms to different email addresses. And we're also able to, lastly, if we wanted to create a custom template 
for the email notifications. So just to show you how that looks, here is the submission. If you wanted to change any of the information in there, you can do that by creating a new template. If you wanted to put a message on it, etc. And that's it. So we set up our form to recap. We added in a action over here to use FormSpark instead of Webflow. Our form is set up in the back end. The how to section gives us the integration settings for FormSpark. Under settings, we select a turnstile for spam protection. We registered with Cloudflare, created a turnstile site. We put the secret key in here. We put the site key in here and also loaded in the API for turnstile. And lastly, we set a hidden input that the user won't see that can redirect us to any thank you page of our choosing. So that's all. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any comments on this or if you have any suggestions for further videos, please leave a comment below. If you're a business or agency and would like assistance setting up FormSpark or any other email API endpoint for your website, please get in touch using my email in the description. And hope this is of use to you. Hope this will supercharge your Webflow websites, help you to get around some of the limitations with Webflow forms and give you a better web design and development experience using Webflow. Thanks again and see you in the next video.